God bless you all in the name of Jesus. I pray that you are all well. And I pray that um, by the grace of God, you are all here. And uh, there's a few things I want to touch on. Um, there's a few things I want to touch on. And I believe by the grace of God, the Lord Jesus will be lifted. The Lord Jesus will be adored. And at the end of the day, salvation will be the key to bring us closer to God. And um, I want to touch on a few things, and I, they're going to be sensitive. They're going to be heavy. But they are necessary to be spoken of. So I want you to share this as many times as you can. Let somebody know, that will let somebody know uh, that Prophet Lovi is about to do a public confession and repentance. I want you to let somebody know that I am live. Share this as many times as you can. I am not on Instagram. I am only on Facebook uh, for this video. And I pray that the Lord Jesus will be glorified at the end of it because that is the the goal and the desire so i want you to keep sharing this let somebody know i know it is extremely late it's um 11 here it's 11 um here but i know in the east coast it's probably uh, 1 a.m or 12 yeah 1 a.m three hours right yeah, it's probably 1, 1 a.m. And other parts of the world, everybody is waking up. So I'm going to give you um, a little history of who I am and what I am and what this video is about. I'm going to give you a, a brief history of who Lovi Longomba Elias is. And I believe by the grace of God, you will get to know who I am. So what I say, you will understand where it is coming from. I am a person that does not like um, any kind of mess. I'm a man that is persuaded by love because God has redeemed me by his love. So it's necessary for me to speak about what I'm going to speak of. I pray that you share this as many times as possible. Now, in this video I may mention a few people. I want you to follow me from the beginning to the end so that you understand my heart and you understand what I'm truly saying. I have no kind of resentment or hate towards anybody. That's very far from me. In fact, if you're like that, you can't even hear from God. So I treasure the voice of God more than anything. So I'm going to be very direct. It's going to be very raw. And it's going to be the truth. I'm literally going to undress myself before you not in a physical or literal sense, but I'm going to show you my heart. Now, who is Lovi Longomba Elias? I was born November the 25th, 1986. I have no idea why they have that wrong online, but I was born November 26th, uh, November 25th, 1986. I was an afternoon baby. I was born between 12 and 1. This is in 1985, no, 1986, sorry. 1986, November 25th. Now, I was born out of a family of musicians. 
My father was a very, very well-known musician. His brother is still one of the biggest African artists there is now, and his name is Awilo Longomba. A lot of Africans know who he is. My grandfather, his name is Vicky Longomba. He's actually the first Lovi that my father was named after, and my father named me after himself. Now, I come from a family of musicians from my father's side of the family. On my mother's side of the family, my mother was half Iranian and half Congolese. She grew up in the eastern part of the Congo. So my mother is Middle Eastern, but she's also um, African. Um, that is the Longomba family. Now, in our household, my father loved the Lord. He was not the most active believer in the beginning. But my mom was a very, very prayerful woman. She loved the Lord too much. My father did too, but he was not the most active believer in that time. Uh, my father never drank, never smoked. He never did anything like that. Um, so it was a, a journey, uh, if I should say, for them. Vie, I'm, I'm live. I'll call you back. Oh, okay. sorry. Love, no problem. You can stay with me on the phone if you like. <laughs> uh, so... That is um, the story of how I was born. Now, when I was six years old, when I was six, I was very, very sick. I was a sickly child. I won't tell you about the happenings at the time of my birth. I'm a miracle baby to my parents. I am the youngest of four. When I was born, my father and mother knew that I was not a very usual child. Why? Because of the means in which I came. So they held me close to their heart because of how I came to be born. When I was six years old, I was very sickly growing up. When I was six years old, I met the Lord Jesus. He appeared in my room. I was very, very sick with malaria and other things because my health was just really bad and I believe that it was demonic. The Lord Jesus appeared to me and he appeared to me with a lot of angels with him. It was the first time my eyes ever saw in the spirit. I wasn't praying. I wasn't seeking anything. I was just a child. The Lord Jesus spoke to me. You are to keep yourself. Never to drink. Never to smoke. Never to touch anything unclean or do anything unclean. Or well, there is a work for you to do when you are much older. I will send you to a foreign land and you are going to plant my church in a valley. People will come from everywhere to see you and to hear from you because of the things that I will do through you. That was the first time that out of the angels that stood with the Lord Jesus, was the first time I saw the angel of the Lord that walks with me. And the Lord Jesus promised me he will never leave me, he will be with me. He will show me things that other people would not know. And the angel of the Lord that was with me moved from the group of angels that were with him and he commissioned him to stand by me. 
Since then, since I was six, I didn't know much of scripture that time. I was a child. And actually growing up, I was a late reader. I didn't read very early because of being sick in and out of hospital. But when the angel of the Lord came next to me, I started having visions, dreams. I started casting out demons when I was a young boy. Six, I was already doing this. If I could get my uncle, Pastor Simon, on the phone, he would tell you this. I started manifesting the virtues of God since I was a very, very young boy. Those who know me, my family who knows me, they will tell you this without a shadow of a doubt. When other children will go and play outside and do all these things, I would be somewhere praying. I started finding ways to be in church to play drums in church. I spent more time in church that my older brother Richie would whoop me because I would prioritize church over school. So my love for the Lord Jesus did not begin when people saw me. I did not start prophesying when I was older. I've been doing this since I was a child. Since I was a child. Now, there are videos that you can see that I think we posted a long time on my Facebook and one we posted recently. A boy that is eight years old that was a product of prophecy. And there are many others. When I was starting out in the house where the Lord commissioned me, which I'm coming to, I had not met my mentor. I had not met him yet. I was already functioning and doing what God wanted me to do. Let me retract a little bit. I moved to the States in 2004, I came to pursue music production. Now remember, this whole time we were touring, we were performing, me and my brother Christian, who is with the Lord Jesus now. I was touring, I was performing, I was doing all these um, entertainment things, but I have always heard from God and anyone that knows me, like one of my sons um, in the Lord, uh, uh, Apostle Mike, he got born again in a studio. He was, <laughs> he, he just come from smoking weed. He comes in the room. Everybody's captivated by me preaching. He goes out and he repents and he says, no, I'm never going to do this again. I'm going to follow the Lord. That was the last time he ever smoked. And this is like uh, nine or ten years ago. I believe ten years ago. There's a lot of people. So I have been walking in this grace for a long time. When the time got close, and this is a part that very few people know, the Lord Jesus appeared to me and he told me in 2007, in 2007, while I was praying and fasting, the Lord Jesus appeared to me. He told me, I am giving you Five years, five years to continue with the music. Then I will come to you. Then you will begin my work. So for five years, I worked very hard. I produced for some of the biggest artists in the country. They were not Christian artists from um, Chris Brown to Jason Derulo to, to, to so many, Justin Bieber. I can't, I can't end how many people I worked with. And in the first year of me getting my publishing deal, 
the Iggy Azaleas, the TIs. The first time me getting my publishing deal, I was nominated for a Grammy. But nevertheless, I was looking at the time that God had allowed me to do this for while waiting for what God wanted with me because I did not truly understand what God was trying to do because I have never had an ambition to preach, to be great, to be known or anything like that. In 2011, I believe, if I'm not wrong, in that summer, the Lord Jesus appeared to me when I was fasting again and praying. And the Lord told me, it is time for you to start this work. You're going to start, begin it at home. I am going to bring people from everywhere. I will be with you. I will prove that I, I will prove that I sent you by the things that are going to happen. The secrets of men's heart will be opened before you and you will be able to guide them and show them my purpose and my will for their life. You will heal a lot of sick people. You will deliver a lot of people and many will come to know me because of you. That is when Revelation Church began. No one has ever poured oil on my head for me to prophesy. No one has ever put me in any river for me to see visions. What I have is a million percent more then you can imagine a percentage I cannot even put it on from the Lord Jesus himself. My gift is from God because it is in it. I was born to serve God on earth. I never wanted a big church. I have never gone to any river. Have I prayed on mountains? Yes, I have mountains in my property. I live on eight acres. I have a few mountains in my property. There's a prayer room I have on one of my mountains. I go and pray. It's a nice secluded place. There's nothing wrong with praying on a mountain. But I've never gone to Africa to look for a mountain to pray or in Asia or any other place or some river to go and get into for me to receive any kind of power. Absolutely not. This is not true. The grace I have, I received from the hand of God himself. I never prayed for it. I never wanted to be prophet. I never wanted any of this. This was given to me because it is my destiny. My own brothers and, and family were not very happy with me when I told them I'm not going to produce music anymore. Recently, I think a few months ago, my little brother Chaz, uh, who is a, a music manager, came to, to church with one of my publishers. His name is Scott. You can look him up. Scott is one of the old owners of Pulse Recordings. Scott came to church and he was blown away. He was like, now I understand why you just stopped working. Now I understand why you blocked out... Um, all your Thursdays. Now it makes sense why you couldn't finish projects. You just drop big artists. I get it now. I did not get it then. He's a Jewish man. So what I have, children of God, is from the hand of the Lord. Nobody gave me what I have. I was recently in South Africa. And I preached in South Africa. The video is up. You guys can see yourselves. Men and women of God who went somewhere to go and get power. They came to repent and they got delivered in the church or in the auditorium where we were in. Witch doctors, sangomas. One specifically I will talk about came and snuck into the green room. 
told me, man of God, I have this bead. I believe it's on the right hand. My son Tanya was there. In fact, he recorded it. I'll post it tonight for you to see. Had a red bead on the hands. If you know what Sangomas are, those who are in Africa and South Africa, you know what I'm talking about. One red bead on a right hand and one on a right foot. Initiated, this is a, but not, not this witchcraft that people talk in the air. Real sorcery and witchcraft. She said, if you take this, cannot be broken, cannot be yanked. They took scissors, tried to cut it. It was not being cut. And it was a small thread. They tried to pull it. Nobody could break it. I prayed for the woman. The evil spirit left her and the bead just broke off her hand. I cannot deliver people. If the wrong spirit is in me. Even the Lord Jesus said himself, Beelzebub does not cast out Beelzebub. A familiar spirit, now I'm speaking as a prophet. A familiar spirit doesn't know your life. He may give you unnecessary details that are common to man. That's why it's called familiar spirit. He doesn't know the secrets of your heart. Only Jesus Christ knows the secrets of the heart. The Bible says it like this. When the secrets of the heart of an unbeliever are put or, or they are opened, and I'm paraphrasing, then the person will fall on their knees and declare, truly, God is among you. Everyone that comes to church, I never prophesy to people I know. If you've been there, I've ever prophesied to you, I won't. I would pray for you, but I will never lay my hands on you to prophesy to you. I don't do that because I'm not a fake prophet. I hear from God. I hear from the Lord Jesus. Countless lives and families have been brought back to purpose because of what God has given me. I am not somebody that pursues people's platforms or anything like that. I am a person that does my own thing. I've always been like that. I am always removed. I don't look for friends. I don't seek out friends. That is not me. Now, there's a reason why I am pointing all these things out because I'm coming to what I really want to say. But I'm saying this so that just in case you don't know who I am, you can know who Lovi Longomba Elias is or who Lovi El Elias is so that you know who I truly am. So that you can know it, not what somebody told you, what I am telling you, and it can be verified. If you want, you can find my ex-wife. She will tell you who I am. You can find my my. Uh, you can find Andrew's aunts who are in the worship team. Some are in the church. You can find them. They will tell you who I am. I have never changed. I'm the same same person that they have known for years upon years upon years. My eyes have seen the Lord. I've seen the Lord. I've seen him with my own eyes. I did not follow a God I read about. I followed a God I saw, then I read about him. That is how my journey began. Now, I am bringing this up, and I'm going to say some things, and I'm not going to say them out of hate. I'm not going to say them out of an evil intent or anything like that. One thing that I am, is I'm very respectful, especially to elders. I respect everyone, but especially, especially elders. I respect them with all my heart. Whether they are wrong or they are right is irrelevant to me. I respect elders, especially if they are a man of God. It's even a different kind of respect because I have seen the God that has called us to serve him. Maybe others haven't. 
or others have seen him in their own way, maybe he rescued them from sin, maybe he rescued them from drugs, maybe he rescued them from different places. Everyone has a different testimony of who the Lord Jesus is to them. I have seen him with my eyes. Some of you don't even know that I died. This is my testimony. You can ask my family. The same year that I believe it's a, a year before my father passed away. I actually died. I accidentally uh, confused sugar for acid and I ate it and I actually died. It was my uncle, Pastor Simon, who prayed for me and I came back. Actually, I was talking to him yesterday. He's the one who told him, no, 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 he's not going to die. The doctors were like, all right, my mom was in Europe. My dad had just come back from Japan and I was gone. And I was in heaven again and I was brought back. They expected me to not recover and I woke up. So I am not talking about a God that I am a stranger to. I know the Lord God who I am speaking about. Now, I am going to mention maybe one or two names. Number one, I want you to hear this disclaimer. It's very important for you to hear this. They are true men of God. Misunderstandings can be there. It doesn't change that a man or a woman is a man of God. Even those who don't like me, even those who don't believe in me, if they preach the Lord Jesus crucified, if they preach about the resurrection, they preach against sin, they preach salvation is only through the Lord Jesus Christ, then they are a man and a woman of God. I cannot say they are not. Now, can we differ in doctrine? Absolutely. Can some people have more knowledge in certain things than others? Absolutely. And just because I don't know something doesn't make it false either. That is not how the truth works. So I'm going to say it again. Whoever I mention, I'm not mentioning out of hate. I am not mentioning out of anger. I am not mentioning because I am upset. There is nothing like that in my heart. The Lord Jesus whom I stand before knows my heart. I have nothing, no, uh, no kind of um, hate, anger, upset. I'm not any of, uh, none of those things have happened. Actually, what has happened, I saw it happening already. And my, my older brother, Apostle Omar, we spoke about it a few months ago. So this is not a surprise to me. But it is necessary for me to speak about because when something has been spoken publicly, then it also has to be addressed publicly. That is the only reason why I'm doing this. I'm not doing this as a rebuttal to anything. No, I have a responsibility, just like the men and the women of God have a responsibility for their flock and they have to give an account to the Lord Jesus. It is the same way I have to be accountable to the Lord. So I have to make sure that those who God has given to me will also know. Because if I stay quiet on this, it may paint the wrong picture. And that is not what I want. And I'm not saying that the man or the woman of God was trying to paint me in a bad light. If they did, that's their own. But I don't want to believe that because that's not the kind of person that I am. I can only speak for myself. When I address things, I don't add he say, she say, who said. I don't deal with that. If it comes from somebody, then I will deal with what has been spoken directly. Not because somebody said this, somebody said that. That's not how Lovi Elias is. I deal with things directly. I am not afraid of anyone. I am not controlled by anyone. And I am not under anyone, uh, anyone's payroll or anything like that. I don't even take a salary from my church. I don't even take a penny from my church. I hope somebody can hear me. 
I don't even take a dime from my church. I was smart when I was in music and when I got into the work of God, I had already planted a lot of seeds that has positioned me where I am. That is why I've never, not saying that if you get a salary from church, it is bad. No, there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. A worker is worth his wages, but I'm speaking about my personal testimony. Now hear me and hear me clearly. A man of God who I still respect, not I used to respect, I'm hoping to respect or I've lost respect, a man of God that I truly, truly respect. Um, and you all know him. His name, most of you, I believe you know him. And his name is Pastor Greg Locke. Now, I'm going to give you a little backstory on how I met uh, Pastor Locke. He's a, he's, he's a real man of God. I'll say it again. Whether we get some things right or wrong, I also get things wrong. It doesn't make anybody false at all. It's just called growth. I believe it was either Daniel or somebody reached out to me and said, oh, Pastor Locke wants to meet with you and this and this and this. And he got my number and he messaged me, said he wants to come down. And him and his wife came down and I, I got them a place. And they uh, got them a hotel. They were there. They came to church. The next morning we met after service. They met me. They met my wife. We got to speak a little bit. And then he left. And he was going to Houston. I think I was traveling somewhere else. I can't remember. Uh, but that's how we met. After that, we would speak. Not frequently, but once in a while we would speak. He would message me. We would talk. Sometimes I would call him. Just how brothers... Or, or, or brothers or colleagues would. That's how it was. Now, there's a few times he did say this, that he reached out to me and he would ask me, oh, I don't understand this. I remember that happening one time and I was actually at Big Sur. I, I pride myself in having a sharp memory. If I forget, God forgive me. But I was at Big Sur and he called me about well, I heard about this third eye thing and this and that and that. I explained to him what I know. Now, I'm not the one who preached. I, there's no message of me preaching anything like that. But I understood what was being taught. Was the language being used right? Probably not. Was the title being used? Prob probably not. But nevertheless, I explained him according to what I know and I showed him in Scripture. And he asked me something and I said, no, this is totally not, uh, that is an occultic term, this is like this, this is bad, but this is what this is, maybe this was used in the wrong way, whatever. That was the end of it. From time to time, when I would be live, he would comment, once in a while he would message my pastor, I would call him and I would greet him. I've never had anything as far as animosity between me and him or anyone for that sake or matter. Now, there was a time that they were having internal conflicts. I don't want to say him, but um, demon slayers and them. And there was a lot of things going on. And I believe Pastor Greg reached out to me and I told him, Pastor, I think I was traveling somewhere and I was with my son. And I said, please, I beg you, don't try to defend me. Please don't defend me. Uh, he said, you know, I'm loyal to my friends and I'm loyal to you. And he's a true, that's truly, um, you know, uh, um, that's truly um, the kind of person that he is. And... Um, He's truly a man that is loyal. And I said, please don't defend me. I even called uh, my brother Daniel and I told him, please, you don't need to defend me. It's okay. There were some issues with the certain event that, um, that he was doing, uh, that my brother Daniel Adams was doing. And for the sake of peace, because he asked me to be part of an event. I never, no one can say Prophet Lovi reached out to me to preach in his church. That is not me. Children of God, that has never been me. 
I get so many invitations, I turn them all down because I know my mandate from the Lord Jesus. I am not hungry for anyone's platform or, or pulpit. I am not hungry for anyone's platform or pulpit. Now, for the sake of men and because I love, I only preach for people I love. And my brother Daniel Adams is there, said, yes, I asked you to come. Because I want people to find the Lord Jesus. And if I become a hindrance for anyone finding the Lord Jesus, I will remove myself because the kingdom of God is greater than anyone, any one of us. I always tell people, one day, if the Lord Jesus hasn't come, ah, maybe I won't be here and God will raise somebody else. If the Lord Jesus hasn't come yet, I probably will be dead. And somebody else will take over the church. Somebody else will take, because I'm just a hired hand. Let me give you a disclaimer. From the beginning of my ministry, and you can ask my, my young brother, Prophet E.J., this. I have always said, I am never going to do people's events because I know God has called me to do my own thing. If I ever do anything for anyone, it's because God has sent me or I have a relationship with them that that relationship compels me to do it. There is only one preacher that has ever paid me for preaching and not because I asked them for payment is Pastor Jamal Bryant. Pastor Jamal Bryant found my account on Instagram. He saw my videos. He called my daughter, Taryn, and said, do you know this man? She said, yes, that's, that's, that's my pastor. He said, I would love to meet him. And we spoke on the phone and he told me, please, I would love for you to come. I would love for you to come. I actually turned it down. Then the Lord told me, I want you to go. That is the reason why I went to New Birth. And when I went to New Birth, I flew my whole team. My wife was with me. My sons were with me because they know how I function in a meeting. When I got there, I ministered, I flew my whole team, I did my thing, and I left. Pastor Jamal tried to give me an offering, a love offering. He didn't even know how to do it. You can reach out to him and he will tell you. I don't know how this man did it. Until now, it still puzzles me. He found a way to put some money in my account. How he found it, I have no idea. I was looking through my statements, this is months ago, and I saw somebody gave me 80000 I was like, wait, where did this money come from? Then I looked and it was his name. This is three weeks later. I picked up the phone and I called him. I told him, my big brother, I'm grateful. You didn't have to do that. He said, no, I just wanted to love on you. That is the only man, only man, and he didn't pay me, not because I asked for something. He found a way to do it, and not because I am in need. I'm absolutely not in need of anybody's money. That is how Pastor Jamal blessed me in my house. I'm usually the one who is blessing people. So I did not know how, I don't know how to receive from people. That's truly the truth about it. There are other people who have been a blessing to me. It's like Prophet E.J. has been a blessing to me, but... Not because I asked anybody or I went to preach because of a certain... It's never like that. So, that is how my relationship with the man of God was. And I told them, please don't defend me. And that was the end of it. Um, once in a while, you would text me if I went live. You would say, oh, I watched this thing. If I see him live, I'll be like, oh, that's really good. And that will be really, that's where it was. Lovely man of God. Now, today somebody sent me a video, and uh, the video was sent to me while I was actually doing live stream, I was doing prayer hour, and uh, when I saw it, I wasn't shocked. If I say I'm shocked, I'll be a liar, but it pained me not in, in it pained me, but I was not upset or anything. But I understood that he was going to come anyway. And I tell you, even me going live right now, if you notice, I never really mention people by name. And I'm not saying that he's a bad person. Please, 
He is a man of God, anointed by God, and he leads such a great, great church. And he has for a long time, he has worked with God longer than I have. In different ways, obviously, but longer than I have. Now, in the video that I was sent, he addressed a few things. And those are the things that I want to touch on. I want to touch on them, not so that people can be divided. No. If you go to the man of God's church, you are in the right church. He will teach you repentance. He will teach you how to walk uprightly with the Lord Jesus. He is not false. He is not fake. No matter what you see online, it's not true about him. I can tell you that as a prophet. But I have to share this because it's my responsibility to my flock to also know. Because if somebody addresses the public and my name is in there, it's important for me also to, to address my church so that they are not in confusion. Because if they know that I honor something, somebody and I honor them and I respect them, and they say something that throws them off. It's very important for me to speak. If I don't, not per se to defend myself because there's really nothing to defend. But in order for there to be clarity. Now, I know the man of God loves me. I have no doubt about that. I watched the video and he was really weeping and it, and it touched me. But I understood that this was truly... Let me, let me not say that. Let me not assume. I know that the man of God loves me. Let me leave it at that. There are a few things that he spoke about. He spoke about my mentor. Now, I personally don't... Um, people have their ways, right? There are things I would do. And there are things I would never do. I have learned the key to walking with God and receiving the grace of God is learning to separate the man of God and the man. I have learned how to do that. I am not... I, I am not somebody that... Um, I'm not somebody that goes into people's private things. If it has to do with God, it will end with God and that's the end of it. I am a man that my best friend is my wife and my son, my sister. That's it, my wife, my son, my little sister Benny and my brothers. That is how I, I function. And obviously my, my, my brother, Prophet EJ. Those are the people that I would say that I speak to uh, in a regular mode. Now, there's a few things that was addressed. And sometimes we fall victim of our own um, speech because you have to remember, culturally also, I am not American. Okay? French was my first language. Lingala was my second language. Swahili was my third language. English is actually my last language. It's not my first language, right? So there are jokes and there are things that we can say that are not really culturally the same way that the land that God has planted me to be in would be, but I'm going to come to that. Now, number one, I'm not going to address my mentor because that has nothing to... I can't bring in somebody that is not there to speak for themselves. It will be disrespectful for me to do that. But I'm going to speak about myself first. The first thing that the man of God spoke about was, and notice I'm saying man of God because he is a man of God. Do I believe he's right in what he said? Some of the things, no. Some of the things I understand. Number one, he spoke about, there's a video I was, and this is an old video, hopefully I can find it. I have one that he addressed, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to specifically touch on these things. There were some women from Tanzania. This is a few years ago. My hair was still short. And um, this woman from Tanzania, not only did God speak to me about what was happening, in fact, in that meeting, my young brother, Prophet EJ, was there. And he was watching and observing how I'm, I'm dealing and doing things. He was 
He was watching and observing how I was doing things. And the woman had an evil spirit in her that she got delivered from, but the woman also had insomnia. The woman had insomnia. And before I prayed for her, I called all the people that are experiencing insomnia to come forth so that God can help them. And I said this, remember, God gives sleep to his beloved. You not being able to sleep itself is a demonic attack. I said, anyone that is struggling with sleeping at night, come forward. And a few people came in front. And all I said was, sleep. Sleep. I know what I was doing spiritually. I know what my declaration was. And the insomnia left them and people fell down and literally they, they fell asleep in church. It wasn't no, uh, um, what is hypnosis? Okay, one, two, three, uh, 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 go to sleep and they fall. It, it wasn't anything like that. It wasn't some snap, okay, look here, look there, now, now, now sleep. It was a simple prophetic declaration. And I told them, God gives sleep to his beloved sleep i've been doing this since i was a child people passed out snowing and i made a joke and i said the nyquil anointing that was a pure joke there is no anointing of sleeping <laughs> doesn't exist the anointing is simply the appointment of god there is no anointing to cast out demons. There is no anointing for healing. The anointing is just the anointing. You are anointed for a particular work. The Bible says this about Jesus and the Lord Jesus says this in Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's explaining the anointing on his life. What God anointed him to do because you are only anointed to do certain things. So me saying the NyQuil anointing and I actually laughed because it was a joke. And people got delivered. And from that day, those people are sleeping well at night until today. To the glory of the Lord Jesus. To the glory of the Lord Jesus. That was a pure joke, number one. Number two... He addressed about palm reading. Let me tell you, children of God, I have never read anyone's palm. Palm reading, yeah, I said spiritual nyquil. <laughs> palm reading is when you take somebody's palm and you start looking at the lines and you start predicting their future based on that. I have never grabbed any human being's hand to read their palm. I have never done that and I will never do that. I don't need to look at your palm to know your life. I am a prophet. The Lord by his spirit will tell me. If there is something that I need to know, he will tell me. And if I also want to search the mind of God concerning your life, I can. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6. Uh, to the end, it tells you that the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. All I did in this service was a prophetic act. I was ministering to a family, and I uh, and I went to, to this man, and all I did was I touched his forehead, and I looked at my arm, and looking at my, my the palm of my hand, I wasn't palm reading. It was a prophetic act. I just looked at now. Is it something that is common? Absolutely not. I'll be the first one to tell you it's not common. I'll be the first one to tell you that it's unusual. But is it demonic? No. If I was a palm reader, then I would hold their palm and say, okay, this and this and this. I never did that. I looked at my own hand. I was looking at my own hand. And the hand was really a prop because I was using my hand to concentrate in order to hear God. That's all it was. And it was prophetic school. So I was demonstrating a prophetic dimension. 
not because I was palm reading. You see, the problem is we read the Bible, but we don't take it for what it says. Let's look at a scripture. Let's look at a scripture real quick. Okay, let's look at this quickly. First Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12. Let me start from verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Verse 3. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. Children of God, if somebody says Jesus is Lord, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to heaven. Repent and be baptized. That person is speaking by the Spirit of God. I am not saying that. That's what the Bible is saying. Wherefore, I give to you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, meaning that anyone that will declare the lordship of the Lord Jesus, you can only say that by the Holy Spirit. You can only say that by the Holy Spirit. Now verse 4, this is where I wanted to go to. Now there, now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Spirit. Lord, listen to that. It did not say the administration will be in the Bible. It did not say that the administration will look like what you're used to. It says there are differences of administration. Why? Because God uses us also according to our personality, according to our way, according to our nature, according to what we know, what we see. God will use what we know and how we are in order to use us. That is not exclusive to the scriptures. That is just not true, children of God. Who ever healed anyone by their shadow? The only one we see in the scriptures doing that is, the Lord, is, is Apostle Paul. Even the Lord Jesus himself didn't do that. Even the Lord Jesus himself didn't heal anyone by, their, by his shadow. When men came with handkerchiefs and rubbed it on Paul's body, they didn't pray. They just took handkerchiefs and rubbed it. They, 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 they rubbed the handkerchiefs on Apostle Paul and they took it and people were, demons were coming out of people. People were being delivered. Was that biblical? Absolutely not. There is nowhere in the Bible that has ever happened. In fact, the Bible testifies this about Paul. He said God brought uncommon miracles through the hands of Paul. Paul did some very weird stuff. Now I'm going to read it again. Verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are, and there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. The same Jesus who spit in somebody's eyes was the same Jesus that said, see, and the eyes were open. The same God who could just declare your leprosy to disappear was the same God that desired of, uh, or, or, or desired of Miriam. To go and give an offering in order to be cleansed. It is the same God that spoke through Elisha to tell the man from the foreign land to go and dip himself in the pool seven times in order to be cleansed. Why is the system changing? 
God is the same God. Notice the result is the same. But the administration is different. I want you to hear this. In the temple, there was a pool of Belteza. The people went into the pool to be healed. If today you have a healing pool in your church, they're going to call you a sorcerer. They're going to call you a witch. They're going to call you a wizard. Yet Jesus never demonized the pool at the church. Why? Because there are diversities of administration. We don't know who was told in the temple to put a pool that an angel will come from heaven and steer the waters and whoever gets in the waters will be healed. This is in your scriptures. The Lord Jesus never demonized it. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations. Diversities of operation. There are people who operate different from you. They will operate different from me. There are diversities of operations. But it is the same God which worketh all in all. Guys, let's believe the word of God. Let's stop like taking what people ask. Let's believe scripture. Oh Lord Jesus, I thank you for your word. Because our vindication is in the word of God. It's not in people's lips. And there are diversities of operations. I completely operate different than people I know. There are prophets and, and apostles and teachers and pastors that I know operate completely Completely different from me. And that is okay. As long as it is the Lord Jesus being preached. As long as it is the presence of God. As long as it is God. As long as it is the Lord Jesus being preached. It is okay. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So the key here is we are confusing the outcome of God because we are caught up in administration and operations of men. So, I'm just trying to show you this, and I'm not saying this from a place of pain or anything. I actually prayed. I actually prayed before I did this, because I'm not a, anyone who knows me, I'm not a confrontational person. I am actually not, and I'm not confronting anyone in this video, but I have to speak the truth. Now, I'm going to say it before the Lord Jesus. And if I lie, may the Lord Jesus hold me accountable. There is no day, no day at all, did Pastor Locke, who is a great man of God, and I am not calling, calling him a liar, there is no day that Pastor Locke ever told me, denounce prophet passion. He has never told me that, never. The only time we ever spoke about him is when he asked me about the third eye stuff. There is no time he ever told me, denounce it publicly. It has never happened. I have his text messages on my phone, and I love this man of God, but that never happened. Where he got that from, I don't know, but it has never happened. Maybe it's something he felt in his heart. I can't speak for somebody's heart, but to tell me you need to denounce this person or this, I'm sorry, before the Lord Jesus who lives forever, that has never happened. It has never happened. Now, the last video that the man of God addressed, and again I'm saying the man of God because I respect this man. I will never disrespect him because he is anointed and chosen by God. He doesn't need my validation. His body of work has spoken for himself. God has sustained him through all these years, him and his family. 
They are doing a great work of God there. Sometimes he would call me and tell me, well, my daughter's ministered here and we saw the hand of God in the prophet. That's 100% okay. I know the man of God is called by God. 100%. I will never speak against the anointed of God. I will not do that. Even if they are wrong, I may point out they are wrong, but I will never be foolish in my speech because I know who employed us. And the last person I want to make upset is God. Now, I'm going to show this video. The last video was that, and I know, I saw when this video was cut and edited. I won't mention the person because the person is a nobody to me. It's absolutely a child. Absolutely a child who got delivered from evil spirits, I don't know how many years ago. So this is not a developed person. Is he called by God? Actually, he is called by God. If I say he's not called by God, I'll be a liar. He is called by God. 100% called by God. But is he wise? Absolutely not. He's very immature. In fact, to be honest with you, he's not even a prophet. A prophet is not anointed by men. A prophet is not appointed by men. A prophet is called by God. Only Jesus. The Bible says, if they be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto them. A prophet meets the God who sent him to speak for him. Can we be prophetic? Absolutely true. But prophets, absolutely. There is no prophet who is sitting online making comment uh, com uh, uh, videos about other people. They are so concerned about their assignment because they even know their time on the planet. They know how long God has given them here to do his work. Let's be real. Some, let, let's be truthful. Is he anointed by God? Absolutely. Is he called by God? Truly. Prophet? Absolutely not. The spirit of a prophet knows who a prophet is. It's that simple. It is scripture. A prophet knows another prophet. You don't need to tell me who is a prophet. I will see them. People sometimes introduce, I'm prophet so-and-so. I will agree with them. I'm apostle so-and-so. I will agree with them. But I know whether they are or they are not. I know that. It's my calling to know. There are sons and daughters who wanted to be prophetic. They called themselves prophets and I pulled them to the side. I said, listen, you're making a big mistake. Desire to function. Don't desire a title. I never wanted this title. I never wanted this title at all. I never wanted it. It is the Lord that made me call myself what I'm calling myself. Now, in this last video, the man of God addressed this. He said that there was a woman who raised his grandmother from the dead. It was it his mother or grandmother? It was his grandmother from the dead. Okay. And her grandmother from the dead. And she used my picture. She said, I call on the spirit of Lovi. And the woman resurrected and I celebrated. Now, was there a celebration? Absolutely, because we saw the power of God. But did I not correct that woman? That is absolutely not true. There are things she said that I would never agree with. And I showed it by what happened in the video. And I understood what the woman was trying to say. Even when she was off with some things, and this is something I spoke to her personally. I spoke to her personally. There are things I don't need to do publicly, especially if I know that I covered a part that many will get it. I don't need to blast somebody online. That is not me. Maybe for other people it's like that. Lovi Elias is not like that. Lovi Elias is not like that. I will show you the video. The woman said, I was worshipping God and saying, Lord, raise my, my grandmother, and the grandmother was not raising. You can go and watch the video. I posted it myself. Then she said that I began to call 
on your spirit. And she describes what calling on my spirit is. And I understand her because I understand the language she's using. She said, God of prophet Lovi, God of my father, the grace of my father. That's what she was saying. She didn't say, Lovi, your spirit come, your spirit come. That's not what she said. She said, I called on your spirit, but I understand what she was saying. She was trying to say what Elisha did with Elijah, that when Elisha came from the Jordan, the sons of the prophets bowed before him and said, surely the spirit of Elijah is upon him. That's what the woman was trying to say. But the woman corrects herself in her speech and said, I began to say, God of prophet Lovi, God of prophet Lovi, the grace of my father, the grace of my father, let it be upon me, the grace. That's what she was saying. It's on the video, guys. You, you can go and see it yourself. I listened to her because it's her testimony. I'm somebody that if somebody is speaking, I'll let you speak. And then I will speak. She said what she said and she said, and then I, I wanted my grandmother to see your face. So I went and I printed your picture that you have your eyes open and I put it on my, my altar so that my grandmother's eyes can see your eyes. I have never told anyone to print a picture of me. I can't speak for other people, but I have never done that. Go print a picture of me and put it in. In fact, in my own house, I don't even like pictures like that. I like pictures in albums. I'm old school. You know, there are no pictures. If you look at my home, I don't have pictures on the wall. It's not really like that. Actually, the only places that I have art is in my studio, right? It's not even in the house. So he takes, she takes the picture and puts it up. I don't know if she was inspired by Elisha laying on the, <laughs> on the boy that died. I don't know. I can't speak for her. She said, when I put it there and I kept saying, God of Prophet Lovi, raise my grandmother. God of Prophet Lovi. What happened? The grandmother came back to life. I was shocked because it was the first time I was hearing the testimony. Now watch this. I'm going to show you the video. Now I'm not, I don't, you know me, I'm not a blogger. So I don't know how to do little screen, big screen, the way other people do it. I don't know how to do that. So I'll just show you from, uh, from, from my other phone. I'm going to show you what happened. It's, you know, for me, I believe in the truth and the truth is very necessary. You know, I, I don't go by oh, the standard. Just... I don't go by the standards of people. Somebody said, he said, she said. Uh, I don't do things like that. Okay. I'm going to show you what happened. Okay. Here, I'm going to put... This is the part, even the people who cut the video trying to say what was said, they never showed this part. Because you see, when somebody is, is, is wicked in their heart, wicked in their heart, they will doctor things for you to see them differently. They will make comments. You see, what these guys don't understand is this, Benny. Okay, you see, there's a difference, and this is correction for people who like to make videos about people. Let me help you, because some of you, I was about to sue you. If it wasn't for my grandfather coming me down and showing me it was unnecessary and that I was going the wrong way by doing that, that it was unnecessary, some of you would have been in really, real, real, real big trouble. I promise you before God. It's my grandfather, and I, I, did, I think I did a video in South Africa, and I spoke about that. He told me, then after that, then what? What do you gain? I realized that, man, I was becoming bitter. That's the reason why I stopped. Let me teach you something that many of you don't know the law, so let me help you understand. Making a comment on a video, an opinion piece, there is nothing wrong with that. But when you phrase what you're saying and you doctor the video, it's called painting somebody in the wrong light. That is a suable offense because if you doctor a video, you are trying when you doctor a video and make it like it is fact, you are actually putting yourself in a place to be sued. I just chose not to. My lawyers were ready. Benny, you know this. You just came back. You know this to be true. My lawyers had papers like this. It was going to be bad. Then my grandfather spoke to me. And I sat down, I cried before God, and I asked God to forgive me. How did I become so caught up with people who have nothing to do with what I'm doing? 
That is what defamation is, painting in a wrong light. Now, you can make a video and say, this is my opinion, that's fine. But the moment you begin to say, uh, Lovi does that, he does this, he's a wizard, he's a witch, and this and this, and then you cut my video in a certain way, you can be sued, 100%. I'm helping you so that you make better decisions, because it's un unnecessary. I chose not to because I was counseled differently. But you never know one day I may do it. I may just wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Now, I'm being honest, you never know. But is it something I want to do? Absolutely not. Let truth be truth. I can play the whole video for you, but it's five minutes. You can go and watch it for yourself. I'm going to play this. Hallelujah! Let me say it to you. Hallelujah! And I hope you can hear it. Let's go on our, on our knees for two minutes. Let's just go on our knees for a second. Father, no one can do this except you. Lord Jesus, only you raise the dead. Father, we thank you for this testimony. I desire never to be lifted, Lord. Even though you used your daughter to have enough faith to believe in my calling in you. That when she lifted the picture and was calling that God you will raise her grandmother. That because of her faith in you, knowing that you have sent me, the grandmother came back to life. Father, may all glory and honor return to you because you are the only giver of life. Lord Jesus, may your name be lifted now and eternally. Yes. Father, we give you honor and praise. Yes. We know in you there is no death. We thank you for the power that resides in this house. Yes. May all those who are believing for miracles, even now those who are here. Guys, did you hear me giving myself credit? Who did I say all glory and honor belongs to? I said, Father, I desire never to be lifted. Only you raise the dead. Only Jesus raises the dead. Only the Lord Jesus can do that. I don't know any witch or wizard that can raise the dead. No, if that was possible. <laughs> no, then, then these juju people, will not. they will keep raising each other, no? But to call the act of God bringing somebody to life necromancy is just wrong. And I'm saying this out of love. To call that divination, that is just wrong. And it's painful to God too, I know. There is nowhere in that video I ever took credit for anything. I listened to the woman of God. I saw what God had done. I understood what she was trying to say that she even said wrong, that me, myself, I spoke to her. Then I told the church when we were happy because the woman's grandmother was raised, I went on my knees. I told the whole church, go on your knees. If you know me, I love to pray on my knees. I told everyone, go on your knees. I reminded them, only you, Lord Jesus, raises the dead. Only Jesus raises the dead. Only Jesus raises the dead. Children of God, do you know how many people in church have been raised from the dead? I just don't put these things out. I'm waiting for a time that it will be time to do so. I put this out because it was done publicly. You saw it publicly. So I was like, okay, when they cut it, when the, the video guys did, they said, Papa Lord, this is a good one. I said, yeah, sure, let's post it. Now, I am not offended when somebody calls me a wizard, a witch, lost. That is fine because my walk with God, I know where I stand with the Lord Jesus. I don't need anyone to tell me where I am with Jesus. I know confidently. 
My brother talks, don't, this was necessary for me to speak, man of God, to end gossip. We don't need uh, gossip or he says, she says, we don't need that. That's why I'm doing it. Forgive me, big brother. Forgive me. In my heart and in my ways, children of God, I know exactly where I stand with God. So I don't need anybody to tell me where I stand with God. Just like you don't need anybody to tell you where to stand with God. Nobody needs that. You need to know where you are with Jesus. And I know where I am with the Lord Jesus. I truly do. I've known this since I was six. There are times where I did foolish things and the Lord will correct me and bring me back to himself. Have I had those monuments? Absolutely. Everyone had. Moses did. Elijah did. Samson did. It's common to man. I have nothing but pure intentions in my heart. That's all I want. Children of God, I've been to heaven. There is no place I'd rather be than heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. I will never miss heaven for anything. I'm going to use Prophet Makandiwa's line. If you get to heaven and I'm not there, then you're not in heaven. You're in hell. That's how confident I am about making it to heaven. I don't want to miss heaven. You see me preaching and I will say heaven is the goal. Let me just tell you something, children of God. There is no way you can mix the power of God and witchcraft. Those two don't mix. Let me just be clear and just tell you the truth. You see, the problem is many are growing in this supernatural area. There's a lot of things that are unknown to you. When Simon the sorcerer wanted power, he knew that he can't operate with two powers. You have to choose who you're going to serve. I'm saying this with love. The man of God said that he has chosen to separate with me. And that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Sometimes we are called to meet people for a certain time. And a certain time people go different ways. There's nothing wrong with that. A hundred percent. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. And he's doing that because he says that there was something that happened with some of his members because of Prophet Passion, who is my mentor. There's nothing wrong with that. It is a shepherd's duty to protect his flock. Nothing wrong with that. That is okay. But to make it seem that I'm out of the way or I'm missing God or I can be redeemed or I've gone into witchcraft. Listen, children of God, I have never visited a, witch, a witch's house. I have never been bathed in any river. I have never gone to seek any power from any mountain. What I have, I'm going to say it one more time. From the time I was six years old, I have walked with the Lord. Not because I looked for him, not because I searched for him. The Lord came to me. Why he chose me, I will never know. I will never know. This privilege doesn't even make sense to me. And the evidence of his calling can be seen. Look at what happened in Houston. Look at what happened in Miami. Look at what happened in Dallas. Look at what happened in Paris. Look at what is about to happen in London. The events as uh, people are feeling from everywhere. Do you think they're coming to listen to a witch? Do you think they're coming to receive mixed things? How can springs of water, of living waters and unclean waters come from the same place? It never works like that. How many families have been restored? 
How many families have been pointed to Jesus? How many people have turned away from their ways because of this work? That's not because of me. It's because of the work of the Holy Spirit. The only reason, again, I am doing this is because my older brother, and I called him a big brother because it is the respectful thing to do, and he is, he's an elder, he's a man I respect, he's a man of God, I'll say it again, He is a man of God, loves Jesus to the brink, he loves the Lord big time. He's a man of God, just like I can be wrong, he can be wrong too. He is a man of God. If you are called to his ministry, stand with him. He's a good man. He's preaching to you, the Lord Jesus. He's bringing deliverance to you. He's bringing salvation to you. He's a good man. He's a man of God. 100%. I have nothing bad to say about him. The only reason I am addressing this publicly is my, the man of God has my phone number. He could have called me. But he didn't. And I'm sure he did that because he felt like he loved me publicly. So if he's also going to end or sever the relationship, he has to do it publicly. And I respect that. There's nothing wrong with that. That is why I am also doing it publicly so that there's no confusion. I love Pastor Greg. I love his beautiful wife that I met. They love God. They are people of God. A hundred million percent. We may not see eye to eye on certain things, and that's fine. Paul and, uh, and Peter didn't see eye to eye. That's cool. He didn't change anything. That's okay. I love the man of God. My heart is pure towards him. If I see the man of God I, and, and he permits, I will hug him. I will shake his hand. I'm saying this. Before I did this life, I prayed. I cried. And I told my wife, I'm going to do it. She was like, are you sure? I said, yes, I think it's the right thing to do. God gave me the go ahead. That's why I'm doing it. Now, in the video, my younger brother, Prophet EJ, was also mentioned. I know Prophet EJ. I've known Prophet EJ for years. This is my brother. There is no children of God. I wish you knew where we came from. You know, today I went to the, was it yesterday we shot at the old house where the church mm -hmm. began. And today I did more things because we are doing some promos for London. You're going to see the story of where all this started from. Children of God, before the Lord Jesus, my hands are super clean. I know who I serve. I'm not doing this video to vindicate myself. I just don't want there to be gossip. He says, she said, somebody assumed, said in the dark, we don't need that. Let love lead. Even when we disagree, let us disagree in love. My brother, Prophet EJ, is not a wizard. There's no witchcraft in this man. I love him. I love his wife. I love his kids. I've known him for years. There's nothing like that. I wish you knew how much we fear God. I wish you knew how much I actually fear God. You'll be shocked. My young brother has no witchcraft. Now, is he everyone's cup of tea? No. Am I everyone's cup of tea? No. The only reason why Prophet EJ is actually close to me is because of his heart. I love people with pure hearts. When the heart is clean, I love people. The Bible says this. Let me, let me show you something that will show you why I move the way I move. I remember uh, Apostle Daniel hit me up a few <laughs> months ago and said, Man of God, I understand why you move the way you move. <laughs> this scripture will shock you. James chapter 5 and verse 10.
James chapter 5 and verse 10. Listen to what it says. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. In other words, learn persecution from your brothers the prophets. The supernatural brings a lot of attacks. I understand that. I comprehend that. Because it's not common. The supernatural, notice, when somebody is not supernatural, there's nothing to talk about. But when supernatural things are happening, there's always something to talk about. So I understand persecution. I understand being misunderstood. I get it. Men of God go through it, but prophets go through it in a whole different dimension. But it's part of the calling. I'm saying this again because anyone that serves Jesus, I love you. I love you all. I love you all with the love of the Lord Jesus. I truly do. And I love the body of Christ. Even if we walk away from each other, let do, let's do it peaceably. Um... I'm going to finish with this. Again, I love the man of God with all my heart. He's a good man. He has never done anything bad to me. Not a single time. I have nothing but the love of God for him and his family. I love him. He's a good man. On this one, do I think he was completely right? No. But is everyone entitled to their op opinions? Absolutely. Is what he did right for his church? Absolutely. Because he knows his church better than anybody. So if he feels like his church is going the wrong way, I, under I completely understand he should do what he has done. But for me also, because I have a responsibility to thousands of people, I also have to speak so that there's clarity. This is by no means I am his rival. No, that's my old brother. That's my man of God. That is my pastor. And I've always called him my pastor. And I'm saying it again. He's a man of God. I love him and I respect him. My brother Daniel Adams is not, and, and I'm not in any spell, under any spell. Children of God, I'm not under any spell. I can't walk with God and hear from God and somebody can put me on a spell. I'm busy breaking the power of witchcraft in people's lives. I'm busy delivering people. How can I be under a spell? Now, if that's opinion, that's fine. But I'm just clarifying. I'm not under anybody's spell. <coughs> I'm not under anyone's spell. No witchcraft can touch me. Ever. Ever. In my life. That is my covenant with God. I am secure by God. My life is hidden in Christ and in God. No one can put a spell on me. I don't care who it is. It is impossible. Are there times I will be wrong? I am sure. Are there times I will need correction? I am sure. Who doesn't? There is no correction. There is no growth. There's no mistakes, there's no growth. So I know I can make mistakes, and I'm still growing. I'm 36 years old. I know I will make more mistakes, and God is faithful to raise me up, so I'm okay with that. But whatever we do, let us do it in complete honesty and truth.
prophet. EJ is not a witch, he's not a wizard, he's not a warlock. You can't be all those things, guys. You can't be a wizard, a witch, and a warlock all together. That's too much. You have to specialize at least in one thing. <laughs> my brother is not a, a witch or a warlock. He's my young brother. I'd rather call me those things. Don't call him. Don't call him that. He is none of those things. As his older brother, I'm responsible for him in many ways. So if he's doing anything wrong, which he can, he's a young man, he can miss it. Come after me, not him. This is a man that helped me when my brother cried, when I was not able to sleep at night because of grieving. He's a man that was there with me, he left everything to come and be with me. My young brother is not a wizard. Apostle Daniel is a fighter just like me. He's an MMA guy that God just started using and God has used him greatly. There's no witchcraft, there's no initiation, there's nothing like that. These are men of God. Now, not every man of God will be for you and that is okay. Find your shepherd. I don't want you guys to shipwreck and talk about things that you don't know. That's why I'm making this public. Because I know what God has put on me. And I know that if you do the wrong thing, what can happen? So I'm saying this out of love. Let love reign. This is what I am going to repent about. My nature has always been me being a lone ranger. I've always been by myself. You know this, Benny. If it's not my family, I don't have friends. I don't have the... It's me, it's family. The Prophet EJ is my, Prophet EJ is my family. Not counting my wife, my, my son, and my little sister. Prophet EJ is my family. My spiritual sons and daughters that have been there with me for over 10 years, that's my family. Um... Apostle Daniel Adam has become a brother now for, for, for at least a year now. Apostle Daniel is a brother to me. But I'm not somebody that hangs out, goes, oh, that's just not me. I just do my own thing. Even people close to me understand that Prophet Lovi just does his own thing. So most of these things have happened also because I have made myself accessible. And I know the calling of a prophet is to be put away, to be set apart. I may have gotten carried away a little bit because of my great love for people. I have loved people. I will tell you this. If anyone says that they know me and I've never been a blessing to them, they, you know that person has never met me. Uh, Bishop Marcus, may God bless you. I have blessed people not only financially, spiritually. I've, I've prayed for people. I've counseled people. I, have, I right now pay for church rents that are not even my church. I don't even know much about them. I just know that they love God and they were losing their church. I've bought land. I've done all that stuff. All because of my heart. But I made myself accessible. That is something I repent before God. I shouldn't be like that anymore. Number two. I repent for this also, giving my focus for the wrong thing, looking at what people are saying, what people are doing. I've never been like that. Actually, even this me addressing this was because it was sent to me. With the person sent me was crying. I can't believe this. And I watched it. I cried. My, me and my wife were watching it. We were coming from a prayer. We were actually heading to a date night. It was sad. But it's okay. There are times I got carried away with watching who say, she say, that will happen. It's normal. I think I fell in love with uh, being accepted with people. Maybe I don't know. That's never been my mindset, but maybe it did. But I repent for that. I need to get back to just focusing on the Lord Jesus like I have, but even more. I definitely repent for that before the Lord Jesus. 
that my focus will be back where it truly, truly belongs, which is before the Lord. None of these people are stopping anything that is happening. They've made so many videos, they've said things, it's never changed anything. I actually stopped looking at those things. And, and uh, being sent those things, I usually won't watch them. But now even more, uh, I just, I'll keep my focus on Christ. And my confession is this. This is what I confess before you. I am a young man. I may miss it sometimes. I'm still growing. I'm still developing. I will make mistakes. You will have to accept that because I'm not perfect. I'm not Jesus. I'm becoming more Christ-like, but I'm not Jesus. So I may miss it. I may miss it. So when you see my weakness, don't think it's wickedness. I'm just growing. I'm going to say that again. If you see my weakness, just know it is not wickedness. I'm just growing. There are things I won't get right. That is why we are in each other's life. So pray for me as I pray for you. Pray for me as I also pray for you. I also confess this. Yeah, I put it back because it will fall. Yeah, because of the weight of the notebook and that. I also confess this from the bottom of my heart. I am a product of grace, not of works. I love the Lord Jesus because he has loved me first. Everything I do is because the Lord Jesus has sent me to do. I'm not saying I get it always right, but I do my best to do what the Lord Jesus wants me to do. So I can miss it. Elijah missed it. Samuel missed it. <laughs> you can miss it. It's human nature. We are still men of God. The man is still there. So, my love for Jesus will never die. That is the only one I serve and I love with all my heart. So I bless you with the name uh, I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. May the name of Jesus always be exalted in my life and yours and let love reign. Let's kill the spirit of gossip. It's unnecessary. Let love reign. Some I may not be your cup of tea. I'm sorry, but find somebody who is for you. And again, if you don't understand me, it doesn't mean I'm false. Your understanding is not where I am, and that's okay. Not everyone that listens to, listened to Jesus agreed with him. Not everyone that heard Jesus understood him. Actually, many didn't. That's why when they crucified him, the whole city came out saying, crucify him. Most of them were healed by him. So it's okay. So just because you misunderstand me, it doesn't mean I'm false. But regardless of your opinion, regardless of what you think of me, I love you. May the Lord Jesus keep you. And tomorrow will be a powerful prophetic service. I can't wait to serve the people of God. I can't wait to serve you. And also remember... Uh, October 27th, I will be in London. The tickets are almost done. Mm -hmm. I am so excited. I am so excited for it. May the Lord Jesus keep you and bless you. Shalom.